it's Corey, and today we're actually talking about the Papu piano again. But today, rather than looking at the main piano system or the MIDI keyboard system, we're looking at the chord pad. So this is the chord pad. When I first got it with the Papu piano, when they sent it to me to just take a look at, actually my chord pad did not work. So I reached out to the team and they sent me a new one so I could play along with some of the features. So I'm gonna show you some of them and kind of give you an idea of how you could also use your chord pad along with their app. So like when I demoed this the first time, you'll wanna turn on the Papu piano first and then you take the chord pad and all you have to do is connect it. Once the two are aligned, you see that they kind of flicker and then this light turns on. Now with my lights here, it's a little harder to see the colors on the chord pad, but again, so this is what it looks like when it's off and what it looks like when it's on. So when you go into your pop a music app, you're going to want to make sure to connect the piano that you're using and then you can get started. All the same functions work the same. So you can see I can play whatever that sounded like nothing. However, now when I use the piano pad, it is set up to whatever I want each of these little things to be set to. When it first comes, it's set to C major, D major, E major, F major, G major, and then an A major, but you can adjust these however you'd like. You can then go into the app and play songs. A lot of the songs have combined features that you can use this. I don't find that those are quite as useful because you can't really quite hear the chords being played underneath. However, what I really like to use with it is the free play mode. What you can do inside this mode is actually adjust the different chords for what you want. So I'm going to actually adjust this so it is C major, then D major, E minor, and then I'm going to change the light green, which would typically start out as F major to a G major. That way I don't have to worry about these two. There's also options so that when it eventually plays with things like the looping options, you can actually select the different kind of accompaniment that you want. Some are better than others. I find the pop ones to be really great. Um, they kind of definitely fall more into a ballad sort of rhythmic orientation. So if you're looking for like, you know, club bopping kind of accompaniment, it's not really here, but of course you can make those up on your own with the piano. Um, but the blues ones are pretty faithful. The bossa nova is pretty good. And again, this adjusts. So if I wanted to make this now a C minor, you can change it. Now, one thing I do notice is, or at least maybe I haven't discovered it yet, I have not been able to find a way how to turn down the sustain on some of these chords with the chord pad. And that can be a little tough because if you're trying to wait for the chord to get through its little rhythmic progression there, it can kind of take a long time because the chord sustain lasts for a lot longer sometimes than you want. I don't find that the reggae sounds much like reggae. That was a reggae one, but other the other ones are pretty good. This is tango. And again, if I wanted to change that to C minor. I do notice when you press a little too hard on these little buttons, you get like sort of a double action where it kind of starts. And then because you press a little harder, it then re starts to replay it again. So it just requires a little tap. There's also folk too, but these really sort of fall more into the pop ballad ones and I don't think they sound so much traditionally folk. But otherwise though, you still have a lot of options. Today, I'm gonna be using one of the broken chord options for pop. So I'm gonna choose this one where it's broken chords one and it's kind of an arpeggiation thing. But you can hear that sustain is lasting a really long time, which I personally find to be a little annoying, but it's not the biggest deal in the world. You can also change the tempo that you wanna play these at um, from this uh, uh, two. So if, right now it's at 120 if I wanted it, like, you know, down to a nine or we'll say 90. You can see it goes a lot slower. So I'll go back to that same broken chords too. Um. 
so it slowed down a lot. But I'm gonna have it be back up to 120 for my purposes. Because the way I have this set up and what I'm gonna demo is how you can use the looping feature to kind of build up a song. Now I've also used this in GarageBand too, and there are elements that you can link up, but I don't find that this is actually as useful in GarageBand. I just prefer to use the piano itself. But everything I said in my previous video still stands for that. So the way you kind of do with a recording, and you can choose different instruments. I think some work better than others, but there are a lot that you can choose from, so it is nice that it's all in this app. So what you kind of get in this first page is you have an option for the recording mode. There's a music sequencer and looping. Looping's what we're gonna be using today. And then there's loop sections. For loop sections, the sections actually refers to the bars or the measures that is what it's going to be looping. I found that to be a little confusing at first I would have just preferred it said like how many bars it's gonna loop for but you can do up to eight so I have my bass track looped and if I play it now you can hear as it loops back there's kind of this weird gap quite able to get that trimmed down and there's no way to trim it so you just have to be really really on point with your recording but now I'm actually going to go in and add a bass line so it does the same thing where it can alternate with the chord pad which is cool but, but I'm actually just going to add a really simple bass line Now I'm going to go on and add a final drum. Again, I haven't quite been able to figure out how to adjust the different levels, but this is still kind of like one of those programs that I think is geared towards people that maybe don't have familiarity with something like Pro Tools or GarageBand, um, but it's still really fun to play with. And now I have a little accompaniment that when I play, you can hear what song I was actually kind of building up. Can't read my, can't read my, no, he can't read my poker face. She's got me like nobody. So that's a little bit of the functionality that you can have with the chord pad kind of in this free play mode, which is cool. And then you can save it if you want. Now there are additional tutorials and stuff that you can use on the app as well to learn more how to use the chord pad. Um, and I've done some of those and they are pretty helpful, but again, it's kind of stuff that I'm already familiar how to use just with having experience with other MIDI pianos too. Um, I find it a little bit awkward actually sometimes to be playing over here. I sort of wish there was just a little bit more space up here where the buttons were up here instead. Like I just find it'd be easier if it was all kind of in one unit. Um, it is nice that it extends it and you can kind of connect more than one device to here and like connect two pianos to the app as well. Um, but again, it, it's a nice feature. I have to say though, now that I have a working chord pad, while it is cool for what it is, I think that some adjustments might need to be made on the app itself to kind of make this more worth it on its own. I still feel really strongly about everything with just the pop of piano, but I think some of this could have been incorporated into the main device because if I were to take this away, I can't really do much with it without it being connected to the piano. So it, it is really reliant on it. Um, and like I said, the first one I got wasn't working. Now I think that a little bit more leery of a device that when you get it, it's not working from the get go. Now the support team and everything at Papa Music, they were awesome with getting me another one of these. But again, it's just one of those things that kind of sticks out to mind. Whereas I haven't had any problems with the piano itself, which I've been really happy with. Again, I just think I would have liked it a little bit more if these features were up here a little bit too. So like I said before, I think it's nice to have the chord pad with the piano, but I do wish that these buttons were actually just integrated into the keyboard itself. Um, either maybe you could hit a button and it could just switch to this. I understand that it's meant to be played together, but I find even with the play along videos, the chord pad does not come through as clear as I would like it to. It does make it fun when you can play along with the video and 
when you can play along with their kind of gamified or gamification system um, and be able to hear it. But I didn't really feel like, honestly, it enhanced my experience all that much with the chord pad. It was fun in the free play mode, but again, I think there are a few things that kind of could be changed to sort of take the app to more of a functional space, considering like things like GarageBand have like trimming features when you're looping that you can make it really more exact. And that's a free app that comes with an iPad. Now there is a big difference in a price between an iPad and pop a piano. However, you know, I think some of those things are kind of expected these days. And while I do think it's fun to play, and I think the main functionality of the pop a piano system is to be like a learner piano, I don't don't know if this would be something that I would buy on my own, to be completely honest. Now, if I were to buy this with my own money, I think I would just stick to the MIDI keyboard. It's still really cool, and everything I said in my previous video, I still stand by completely. Um, and if you're wanting to check out more features of just the keyboard, make sure to check out my part one video, and I'll have that linked in the cards as well. So those are kind of my thoughts on the Papa Piano chord pad. If you have any questions, I can try my best to answer them for you. Um, but otherwise, I will see you next time. Bye!